All right. Good morning, YouTube. All right. Good morning, crew. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the PT on Ice Daily Show, brought to you by the Institute of Clinical Excellence. My name is Julie Brower. Super excited to be here on Jerry on Ice Day, where we jam about all things older adults. So first and foremost, where in the world is MMOA? So on the road, you can catch MMOA live September 24th. We're going to be in both Nebraska and Kansas. And then October 15th, we are in Alaska, which is just so badass, and Delaware. So that's live online. Our next eight-week cohort of Essential Foundation starts on October 12th. And then our um, Advanced Concepts course starts on October 6th. So if you're wondering about any of the courses, you're thinking about getting one in before the holiday start, make sure to go to ptinice.com. Make sure to message any of us if you have any other questions. Okay, to dive into our topic today, don't drop the baton. So as jury clinicians, a principle that we, we have to realize and get on board with is that older adults, more than any other patient population need us as providers to communicate effectively and craft a seamless handoff as they transition through levels of care. That probably sounds super obvious, but this critical step, this handoff is where I believe providers have so much work to do. So, all right, let's talk about track and field. Um, Track and field was my jam back in the day. Many of you probably have ran track and field as well. Um, even if you've just watched the track and field Olympics, like you're going to feel this one for sure. So four by 100 meter relay, right? You have four people on your team. Each individual is running hundred meters. When the one individual is almost done with their hundred meters, they pass a baton off to their teammate and then so on and so forth for the rest of the uh, three individuals. That handoff of the baton is literally practiced hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times because if you drop it, you're disqualified. Like that handoff communication is so freaking dialed in by the teammate who is handing the baton off with these perfect cues at the perfect time so that the teammate who is receiving the baton knows exactly when to start sprinting at 100% nonetheless, when to put their hand out, and when to grab the baton. And you guys, they do this without ever having to look behind them. They never have to slow down. They never have to look behind them. They are off to the races. It's beautiful and totally seamless when it goes well. So one of the top 10 like worst days of growing up for me is when I was brought up to the varsity relay team on my track team. And I mean, clearly a ton of pressure. I was feeling absolutely terrified, but so excited that I was playing with the big dogs. And my teammate and I dropped the baton. We did not communicate well, dropped the baton, and were completely disqualified. Now, we were the fastest 
team out there. Like we would have smoked everyone else on the track, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter. And the worst part is like that mistake was on display for everyone to see hundreds of people in the crowd for my coach, for my teammates to see, right? It was absolutely awful. Now, let's just say we had a bad handoff. We didn't drop it, right? So let's say the communication was poor and uh, my teammate receiving the baton had to slow down or look behind them. I mean, what would happen? Every other teammate would have had to run even faster, like put themselves in the absolute pain cave to make up for our mistake. The unfortunate reality is that medical providers do this. They drop the baton all the freaking time. Our older adults get so lost in care transitions and there's so much poor communication sharing. I mean, there's no scarcity in the literature even to tell us that this is a massive problem in demonstrating how this is linked to poor outcomes and increased rehospitalizations. However, the problem is, is that because we operate in silos, right, the hospital operates in a silo versus the home health company versus the SNF versus the acute rehab, because we operate in these silos, like these poor transitions are hidden a lot of the time. Not many people witness it. There's no follow up and we don't often have to face any repercussions. So what does this look like in our clinical practice? This can be the acute care PT or the OT who makes a totally inappropriate referral to home health. It can be the physician who doesn't include any information about mobility or ADLs in discharge paperwork. It can be the case manager who doesn't get the right equipment order. It can be the nurse who doesn't fully go over the med list at discharge. It's when, as clinicians, we run a balanced outcome measure and we spew out all these recommendations about falls without any follow-up or without ensuring if our patient actually understands what we're saying. It's when the home health clinician has a patient with a complex neurological injury who needs a specialized neuroclinic to go to outpatient, but instead they just refer them to any other ortho outpatient clinic. Right. Think of all these scenarios. You all have probably been the handoff teammate or the recipient of a lot of these scenarios. And think how that is impacting our older adults. I think the attitude in this situation many times is like, well, when that patient leaves, it's no longer our problem. Right. I don't have to see them again. That's for the next provider to worry about. And then if you add on, crazy productivity standards, right? Like we are very short on time and we have to think about billing. We have to get to our next patient. Many times we rely on our team members to do their job well, which as we all know, does not work out a lot of the time. Like if we want to do a job well, we have to realize that we have to do it ourselves many of the time. So think about what we are risking here when we aren't deliberately finishing the drill for our patients. When we do not take ownership of following through, dotting every single I, crossing every single T, we are risking our older adults moving closer to one rep max living, closer to transitioning from pre-frail to frail, risking institutionalization. We may be robbing them of the opportunity to move from sickness to fitness. This handoff, arguably, is as important, and in many cases, I think it's more important than the fitnessy stuff that we're doing, right? We can be the highest quality fitness forward PTOT and totally knock it out of the park, just like my relay team. <clears throat> we were the fastest, most skilled team out there. But if you don't craft a seamless handoff, if you don't pass the baton, when it comes to discharging that patient to the next level of care, it, it doesn't matter. All that fitness forward stuff doesn't matter. It doesn't go anywhere. So here's where 
we need to have this mindset and behavior shift. So I want you to start imagining this. What if we operated as if that handoff that we perform through levels of care was on display like you were running a four by 100 meter relay race? Imagine that. Like, can you imagine how our clinical behaviors would shift if we, if the way we set up our colleagues and patients for either success or failure was transparent and on display? Like, what if there, re, there were repercussions if we did this really terribly? And what if there were incentives if we did this really well? I really believe that we need to start thinking outside of just our silo of care, right? Like what if we truly felt responsible about what this older adult's life was going to look like, not only in two days, in two weeks, in two months, in two years? What if we felt 100% responsible for how well we set up the next clinician in a different setting, even though they are a complete like stranger. I mean, imagine, imagine this, imagine if clinicians between settings communicated about their patients, right? Like if, if you're an acute care therapist and let's say you received a phone call from the home health therapist and you're talking about the patient, right? And that acute care therapist is giving them as much information as possible. That home health clinician is saying, holy crap, like, thank you for saving me so much heartache and so much time and giving me a heads up about this patient. My job is going to be a hundred times easier. Imagine that. Imagine that versus the opposite situation that can happen. I know as a home health clinician, I feel like doing this all the time where that acute care therapist gets a phone call from the home health clinician. The home health clinician is saying, you made an, a completely inappropriate referral. This person isn't even homebound. They don't want anything to do with therapy. I just wasted my entire day. I'm out $170. Imagine that. That would not feel very good, right? But imagine if that was, there was that communication and that level of feedback. I think we would start to perform these handoffs with more consideration. So there are so many ways to level this up clinically. I'm going to give you a few that coming from doing both acute care and home health that I have found to be really important because they're areas where the baton is dropped very frequently. All right. So first and foremost, provide crystal clear expectations of the next level of care. If you are an acute care PT, are you explicitly providing details about acute rehab versus SNF versus outpatient versus home health? Do you have your list of the trusted providers that you know? Do you have the inside knowledge of what one facility looks like to the next? Are you giving patients and family members what the typical frequency and duration is, what the expectations are of the patient and family. So for example, acute care PTs, are you ensuring the patient is actually homebound? Are you telling them that they will have multiple clinicians coming in at random times through several days of the week for 30 to 60 days? Are you telling them that they're not going to have fancy equipment like a Sally stander or an ultra move that they're going to be able to bring into the home? Are you telling them they're not going to be able to have a second set of hands and they're going to have to have caregiver support? Think about that. When I have started to give that level of detail of information, that completely changes for many patients and their families whether they want to proceed with home health services at all. Many of them are like, oh, oh like you're not going to have this equipment. You're not going to be in the home for more than maybe, you know, 30, 40 minutes. 
you're not going to have an extra person to come help you. I'm not like, no, we don't want home health. Maybe we have to go and to rehab instead. Right. You're not only saving your patient a lot of time and the family member, but you're saving your colleagues so much heartache from having to go through going to this person's home and dealing with a patient that in the end, they may totally end up losing, right? All right. So second, talk up your teammates. Talk up your teammates, like set your colleagues up for success that put them in position to get the most out of your patients. You want to create the positive expectation in your patient's head that they are going to have an excellent experience, like that they are in the right hands. So I think about this when I do start a cares for patients. And many of you have, can probably relate to this. You are in the home for an hour plus you do the start of care, you ask this patient 17,000 questions. And what does the patient and family member ask? Oh, so you're going to be the one who's following my whoever family member um, for their entire time. Right. And you're like, oh, no, I'm not. Someone else is going to come. That is different than, you know what? It's not going to be me following, following whatever Mrs. Jones, but my teammate, Melissa, she is absolutely amazing. You're going to absolutely love her. She's so thorough. She's going to take her time with you. She's one of our best clinicians. You are in really solid hands. Melissa and I are going to communicate about everything going on so that you don't have to repeat yourself. It's going to feel completely seamless. Imagine that scenario, talking up your teammate like that. Melissa is going to walk in the door to go see that patient for the first time. And they're already going to have this expectation that she's awesome. And that session is probably going to go much better. Similarly, many times a PT will go in and evaluate a patient first before OT. Many of our patients don't understand the full scope of OT. Many PTs and OTs don't understand the full scope of OT, right? But what can you do is you can start talking up your OT discipline, right? Like they treat the entire human. Can you start talking to your patient about the fact that they're not just here to help you take your socks on and off, right? They're going to dig into your leisure time activities, what you like to do for play, for sleep, for work. I mean, all of these things that OTs bring so much to our patients, but many of them don't understand. How can we talk them up? In MMOA, we really focus on doing this when we are doing a lecture, whether it's online or in person. We have started talking up the next person who's coming on to the mic, right? Like if Dustin is up there lecturing, he's ending his lecture to say, all right, y'all take a break. And then next Julie's going to take the mic and we're going to start talking about deadlifts and it's going to be a total blast, right? Talk up your teammates. Okay. Lastly, we need to remove barriers, get the right team in place to make it possible for them to advance to the next level of care. We have to remove barriers. For acute care PTs, that's finding out exactly what that home setup looks like. Ensuring the equipment is 100% appropriate. And it's not just going to sit on the front porch unused and our patient is left unable to get into their home, right? Are we refusing to discharge without having, um, are we refusing to discharge until we have a caregiver training session? right? We know how important it is, not only for compliance to exercise, but just in terms of that patient staying at home and not coming back to the hospital, how important it is to have that caregiver involved. For home health clinicians, if your goal is to get that patient to outpatient or into community fitness, are you figuring out day one how to discharge that homebound status? Are you thinking about what is the transportation need that is going to be required to get them there? Are you getting social work involved 
day one? Are you increasing their capacity outdoors as soon as possible? Getting them in and out of the car, making sure cognitively they are capable of managing public transportation, right? Because what good is it if we bring all these fitness forward interventions to get them as healthy as possible, but then we don't get them to the point where they can get out into the community or get out to that outpatient clinic. All right, y'all, three big things, provide clear expectations, talk up your teammates, remove barriers. Remember that the perfectly crafted and seamless handoff wins the race. All right, that's all I got for y'all. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your Wednesday and we will talk soon.